Hello and welcome to 2 by Tuesday, where every second week we solve all the world's problems using the power of a 2 by 2 matrix. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll see that I'm decked out in Christmas colors. It's the last 2 by Tuesday for the year, possibly forever. I'm actually looking at revamping and doing something new, still under the banner of 2 by Tuesday, for 2023. And talking about 2023, I thought it was timely. And I'm sure most of you are on a breaks already. You're already sort of tuning out and relaxing. And that's like, go for it. That's amazing. I've personally just come back from four weeks overseas. So I'm really excited to start planning again and strategizing. And I find it a lot easier to do when everyone else is on a break because there's no distractions in my inbox or anything like that. So this is a good time for me to start thinking big and dreaming big and just really trying to be a bit creative and step out of what I'm usually doing. I thought I'd share a nice framework in terms of sorting out 2023. The acronym is SORT, S-O-R-T. Before we dive into that, we'll look at the two different variables across the different axes to explain what these elements are. So anytime you're looking at planning, there's an, a bit of reflection, right? So you're looking at your past. On the x-axis on the left here, I have the word past, digging back into what's working, what isn't. And as part of this, I'm going to share some really awesome tools that you can use across some of these quadrants to make the process come to life a bit more. Very pragmatic processes and resources too. Well, it's the opposite of past. So that's anytime you sort of plan anything or strategize, you're thinking about what does this look like in the future? So on the right here, on the x-axis, we have the word future. Then there's two different ways of looking at information. One is like you're going to gather the data, gather the information, gather the evidence. And the next is you've got to direct that towards something. On the y-axis up the top, I've got gather, a bit of sort of uh, self-reflection, research mode, but also a deep dive into who you are, what brought you joy, what doesn't, etc. And then we're going to direct it. So down the bottom of the y-axis is the word direct. Once you have that information, where are you directing your energy? Where are you directing that information to? The acronym is sort. So up the top left is the letter S. Top right, O, bottom left, R, and bottom right, T. Top left is survey the past year. Survey your 2022. On the top right, the O stands for organize priorities. Bottom left is R, and the R is for reflect on what to keep and change. And this is like you did this in the order that it's in. Reflect on what to keep and change. And the bottom right is you can have all the information in the world, but you actually just have to then take action. And no worries, if you decide to skip all the steps and take action, that's totally cool. I live that way a bit. And then I go back and reflect and re-engineer what went well or what, what didn't. Make sure that you have that sort of feedback loop uh, when things go well that you can optimize and things don't go so well. So you know when to like shuffle or pivot and, and change direction. All right, top left, my favorite tool for surveying your 2022 year is actually going to your calendar. I love our Nair Aeol, the author of Indistractable talks about our values are reflected on where we spend time. Now I run my life through my calendar. So what's really great about coming to the end of the year is that I can look through the calendar. I go by week by week. I just get my laptop, I go to another room. I sit down, I have two columns. What are the meetings and times in the calendar that really brought me a lot of joy? And I write those down, like really exceptional levels of joy. I enjoyed that conversation, that meeting or whatever we were talking about or whatever I was doing. And then the other column is what are the meetings that drained my energy? I was not looking forward to. I regretted saying yes to. You can put that in one column as well. Then what you do is after that, to go through 52 weeks, you gather some data and patterns and create two different lists. One is things that I'll do next year and things that I will say no to. So I have my not to do list over here and I pretty much kept to it. I think so. <laughs> so part of my um, surveying my 2022 is like, how much did I commit to my not to do list and my to do list as well, but such an awesome activity to kick it off. The top right is to organize your priorities. So this is a really question of, okay, who do I want to be? What do I want to be doing? What does that look like for me in 2023? And a lot of time when we plan, we just take, like if something went well, we're like, oh, we'll just do that better. We'll maximize that. You won't get dramatic growth if you do that, if you just try and extend things that are already working, because sometimes growth can happen for something remarkable that's different, that's completely outside of scope of what you're even thinking or what you even think is possible. So one of my favorite tools is Jenny Blake. She shares this in her book, Pivot. It's called The Ideal Day Mad Lib. I'll link to it in here. Basically, it's a two or three page Google Doc and you go in and you complete what does an ideal day look like? So when you wake up in the morning, uh, what do you see in your calendar? Where are you waking up? What does your morning routine look like? Who are you in conversations with? And I'd even extend this out for the Booked Out Facilitators. We talk about what is your ideal month and how many workshops are you delivering? I think we often think oh, I want to be busy and successful, but that might be... I mean, it's different for all of you. So like, it's really defining what success is and organizing those priorities. But also like, don't just simply consider, oh, this went well last year and how do I build on that? That's why I love the Ideal Day Mad Lib because it really throws you out and gets you to think more peripherally around what you do want. On the bottom left, once you've established not what not to do, what to do and what 
great looks like for you in 2023, it's thinking about, okay, everything that I've got here, what again to reinforce these lists do I need to keep or do I need to change to focus on that direction? And this really links closely to the bottom right, which is to take action. Tony Robbins, um, I don't know the exact quote, but he always says, once you've made a decision on what you want, do one small thing that will help get you there. And I'll go through a quick example of something that I've, I've been looking at. I think I'm getting a bit too comfortable working from home and I've established a routine that isn't that productive. Like I'll come in, I'll exercise, but I get distracted by doing the washing, hanging out with the dogs or like just stuff will come up and I will leave my desk and not really capitalize on my most, the best working time for me, which is in the morning. I can get a lot of stuff done if I just give myself three hours of deep focus. And at home, I'm not really getting into that. So I recognize this. And my priority then is to well, create more focus, to create more deep work time in the morning, which actually need to be stimulated by new environments. I think that's really important to creative thinking as well. So today I made an appointment. I went to a co-working space in South Brisbane. I had a look around and my first trial is I'm just going to book in for a month and see how that goes. But the first step, if that was you, it could be even just reaching out, even going on Google, having looking at a few different things, whatever you decide that will get you closer. What is like the smallest, like the MVP, the minimal viable product, but for you is like the MVA, the minimum viable action that you can take. So think about on the bottom right here, the MVA. Now, hopefully something like this, where you're sorting out your 2023, it definitely isn't a one and done. Things change, the environment changes, market changes, you change. We're disrupted all the time or we can be disrupting others. It should be like a relentless practice of just paying attention through the year going, okay, how do I sort this? What's happening for me? Why am I feeling this way? S, I'm going to survey it. O, I'm going to organize my priorities and see what they are. Maybe things are aligning or not. Maybe my priorities have changed and I need to switch what I do, my priorities. That links into reflect on what to keep and what to change. And then we go into T, which is take action. A nice book on take action. Of course, we're going to shout out to MBS, Michael Bunga Senior, the book, How to Begin. I think MBS's book really hits the two right areas of this matrix, organize priorities and take action, because organized priorities is actually thinking, what is the criteria for these priorities? What is something that is, and as he mentions in his book, thrilling, important and daunting? And that is another way to get you outside of the scope of your day to day and really think about like, what is something meaningful here that will actually give me a bit of a challenge into the new year. So that's it for Two by Tuesday. Again, it might be the last one. Who knows? We'll see what happens when I go into my deep work mode and think about redesigning the newsletter and content for 2023. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you thought of these Two by Tuesdays. Let me know in the comments. Or send me an email. Hello at leannehughes.com. Thank you so much for being here and for watching these videos and walkthroughs this year. I hope these have helped you in some small way. And I look forward to giving you more virtual high fives and connecting with you in the new year. Have an awesome break and see you then.